Hello and welcome back to the Oko Masters Hardcore Challenge, No Starbase Challenge. Um, this is episode 5, and we are trying to make our way towards this star before the Sly Landry get us. But I think it's going to catch up with us, which is unfortunate. But um, I, right now, can't be bothered to fight any Sly Landro, so I'm going to uh, keep saving and loading until I get there. So I'll be back in a bit. I gotta say that is actually quite a nice remix. I like that one. Um, that's one of my, that's one I I do like. But I gotta say that the uh, light years light years away one is, is still my favourite. I think that's what it's called. Um, but now we've got to head towards Source. Here we go, guys. This is the moment of truth. Can we stop the probes from attacking? There's only one way to find out. Hello, visitor. We are the Slylandro. I am content to hover. A Slimandro speaker. Your presence here fills us with excitement. We have gotten so few visitors over these many drawn. We hope you can stay to talk with us for a time. It's the Slimandro and my favorite theme song. I love this song so much. It's a really good one. Um, I am captain of the Earth Starship. Oh, How you doing? This is terribly exciting. We will be happy to tell you about ourselves if you will please, please do the same. You see, we Slylandro have been extremely interested in learning about the galaxy, but our physique makes us incapable of leaving our gas giant home. Therefore, we are totally reliant on our infrequent visitors to keep us informed about events outside this planetary system. And visitors usually only show up every few drawings. We hope that our newly deployed exploration probe fleet will not only gather information for us, but inform other races of our presence here as well. Now just quickly, I am aware that um, the audio might be a little bit out of sync, but I will fix that for next episode, don't worry. We hadn't heard from the outside galaxy in a whole Janossa, and then the Melno may come by and sell us a probe, and just a few hundred locations later, you show up. Oh, the probes? Right! Well, like we said just a short time ago, a race called the Melno May stopped by. They said they had acquired some information revealing our existence and they wanted to study us if we didn't mind. In fact, the Melno May said they would pay us for the right to do so. I guess they are biology nuts or something. Anyway, in exchange for our information, they gave us a probe vessel. Okay, so obviously the idea here is just to get to the subject of the probes. So there we go. Can you give me the details about the probes? Let's go down that route. Sure. If you are interested, in exchange for information about the life on Source, the Melno may offer to give us a remote exploration probe. It would roam the galaxy gathering information and contacting alien races, and when it had filled its data storage units, it would return here and reveal to us everything it had learned. Okay, let's just go straight to the topic of the program so that we can get the codes and leave here and destroy all the Slylandra probes. Set on a 500 rotation mission to seek out new life and new civilizations to boldly go where no catalog item 2418 remote self-replicating robot explorer probe had gone before. What a great reference that was. Slylandra have obviously watched Star Trek and they just didn't tell anyone about it. That's what they uh, watch on, on Source. It's the only program that's Our available. do not attack. They have only defensive capabilities. Offensive behavior is not part of the instructions we programmed into the probe. To do so would be reprehensible. They do attack, I've seen it for myself. We can talk about a little bit more of the, the program if you want to. I think we should. Sure. What would you like to know? Okay, their defensive capabilities, what are they? What are they about? That behavior was hard coded by the Mel Norme. We couldn't mess with it. Essentially, the probe will only fire its weapons if it has been attacked and cannot communicate with the attacker. And when it defends itself, it uses its lightning weapon, yes? Content to hover? No. The probe is armed with a battery of missiles. It doesn't use its electrical discharge device in combat. We were never attacked by any missiles. We've just been attacked with lightning bolts. Well, at least, uh... That's impossible! Has. It's inconceivable! It's inconceivable! The discharge device is used only for breaking down raw replication materials into their component compounds for easy gathering. Okay, we're just getting whittled down with these options. We've only got one sure. more to go. 
It was a difficult task for us, since we'd never done anything like that before. But for the most part, we just adjusted his standard program, which went something like scan for targets as defined in target list. If no current target, then select new target from the current targets list using specified priorities. If current position is at current target, then set current behavior to new behavior based on behavior priority settings. Perform current behavior. Okay, that's the basic program. I said it was simple. And here are the tables used by the program. Target list with associated target priority. Space vessel, five. Transmission source, four. Astronomical anomaly, three. Planet bearing life signature, two. Raw replication materials, one. Probe behaviors with assigned priorities. Communicate, five. Record data, four. Analyze data, three. Seek replication materials, 999. Move to current target, one. That's it. Oh, can we not, uh, okay, I, okay. That's strange, let's talk about more later on. Okay, okay. I thought we could have just gone further with that. Oh, oh, there we go. Can you explain the probe's replication ability? There we go, that's what we should say next. Well, we're not hardware people, so we only know the theory. What happens is that while the probe is exploring space, whenever it's not doing something more important, it hunts for asteroids and similar space junk, zaps it into its component parts, absorbs the debris, and when it has enough raw materials stored inside, it manufactures a perfect replica of itself. So even though we only bought one probe, by now there should be hundreds of probes. Maybe even thousands. Yeah, the probe said there'd be, uh, what was it, 8 million in 5 years? So uh, yeah, we need to get rid of these probes before they destroy everything, really. So can you give us the code, please? Traveler Traders. It was catalog item 2418. Remote self-replicating robot explorer probe. The economy model. Why did the Mel Norme sell you this thing? They knew you were incapable of doing anything useful. The Mel Norme traded it to us for data on the life on source. They said the information was unique and was worth, oh, I don't really understand their units of exchange. Something like 10,000 Cree dots or something like that. Fortunately, that was exactly the price of their catalog item 2418. Remote self-replicating robot explorer probe. Well, isn't that lucky? It was exactly the amount that they needed to buy the probe. Two or three hundred rotations, I guess. Now there is actually, I think, on the Ultronomicon, um, some some uh, stuff about how long these days and stuff are. So. Sure. What would you like um, to know? Two or three hundred rotation. I can't remember off the top of my head, but there's a page that tells you how long all these all these things are, which is pretty cool, actually. I'd be glad to. You see. The probe has the capability to seek out raw materials, process the raw materials into component compounds, collect the compounds, and then, when it has a sufficient supply, it can build a duplicate of itself. We decided that since we had only one probe, we should change the replication priority and crank it up so that there would be more probes sooner. Ah, oh, what a what a what a crucial mistake! What a what a rookie error from whoever yeah. it was, I can't remember. The factory setting was 2, in between movement, at 1, and analyze data, at 3. I told Joyce Lifting to set it a bit higher. Let me ask him what he set it to. Oh, my. That was a bit extreme, wasn't it? Joyce Lifting told me he changed it to 999, the highest setting on the dial. Well, good one, joyous lifting. Well done. You have caused a galactic-wide catastrophe. Congratulations. The way it works is that every time a behavior is completed or interrupted, the program selects a new behavior based on the defined behavior target priorities and what kind of target is currently selected. I think a really high priority would cause a probe to focus its attention on that behavior. We can prove that your ships destroy other ships. No, it cannot. 
It is not programmed for hostile behavior. What is your reasoning? My reasoning is that Joyce Lifting had no clue what he or she was doing. Seeks raw materials and processes them in preparation for replication. We're just getting him to realize now. Content hover, you're going to finally realize what, what's gone wrong here. The answer is simple. It would spend more of its time seeking raw materials for its replication process. So what? You don't see content. You, you can't see the problem here. Think about it a bit. Just think about it. I don't see what you are getting at, but I'll play along with you. Like I said, alien ships are the top priority target. Once a probe scanned a ship, it would instantly move toward it. Then, when it got to the ship, it would initiate communication automatically. When communications were terminated, a new behavior would be selected and... Uh-oh! A new behavior would be selected. And since the replication setting was set to maximum, the probe wouldn't get time to pick a new target. It would use the current target, the ship, for raw replication materials. It would process the ship, break it into component compounds with electrical discharges. Oh no! What have we done? Traveler, you must tell us what we can do! How can we stop the probes from destroying all life in the galaxy? There we go, now you know how stupid Joyous Lifting was, yeah? Gee, someone's going to uh, have to get a super mega self-destruct code, do you have one? Why or, yes, yeah? there is! You're a genius, Traveler! Why didn't we remember that? Oh, there's a problem though. How are we going to transmit the code? Well, while we ponder that problem, at least we can give you the code sequence. That way, if you run into a probe, you can destroy it without getting shot at. So you can remember what the precursors looked like, you remember the Urquan from the Sentient Melu, but you can't remember a self-destruct code. Brilliant. Thanks, Lalandro. You, uh, you certainly showed us your uh, amazing intellect there. Um, that's brilliant. So actually, we have now got the code that we can destroy all Slylandra with. That is actually really great. Not all Slylandra, all probes. So, we can now be completely immune to probes. We just have to transmit the destruct sequence when we're talking to them. We don't even have to fight them. We get free IUs, which is not really very useful. But at the same time, it means that, uh, well... We can basically not have to get into any fights now, and we just have to one by one destroy all the probes, um, which is good, which is brilliant. So um, I'm going to go to this planet now, which is actually a really good planet to mine at for biological data. Um, so I'm slowly making my way there at Beta Corvi Planet One. Let's see how much biodata is down the surface. It is a Weather Three Tectonics Three, which is a little bit annoying actually because I don't like the weather. And combined with the tectonics and combined with uh, biodata might be an unpleasant experience, but hopefully we can get a lot of biodata. And it is these really quick moving guys as well, which makes it all the more frustrating. This could be annoying actually. I bet you this is going to be extremely frustrating. Okay, well there we go, there's one, there's two. Oh, this is going to really annoy me. I bet you I'm going to lose loads of, loads of crew now. That's a good start. That's not a bad start. We've only got 15 crew, so we do have to be careful actually. A bit more careful than we've been than we have been big. Um, so, yeah, let's just um, try to do this as quick as we can without losing too much crew and getting electrocuted all the time. That is the idea. There's a lot of, a lot of lightning bolts going on. The problem is with uh, with Weather 3. Wow, I just got hit by one of them in the eye. One of them just headbutted me. Look at them. Um, they are moving very quickly. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, these things are moving across the entire surface of this planet. Oh my god, I just took an absolute ton of damage. Took so much damage there. Is it even worth me continuing? It really isn't, is it? Shall I just go back up again? Probably. Yeah, I can't, I can't, yeah, there we go. Okay, it's, I, I, I can't, I can't continue this. It's just, it's just terrible. We need to reload. Um, okay, let's just reload the game. Go back down there. Let's try this again. Okay. So, we nearly got hit straight away there, but there we go, there's one down. At least they only take two hits to destroy. I really want to get the double movement on the, um, on the surface of the planets though, because then I can actually keep up with these guys and actually just. Whoa, loads of earthquakes uh, all around me there. Um, oh my god, I can't believe I just missed that there. Oh, that's annoying. 
actually, is it too bad? No, it's not too bad because there's still three things I need to need to get on the surface of the planet, so it's fine. Just save again, of course. You need to keep saving in this game. It's a very crucial, crucial part. This game is to keep saving, otherwise something is guaranteed to go wrong. Oh, oh no, there's still there's still four. So I mean, we wasted a bit of fuel there, but and um, we just got hit for three crew as well. This is a bit annoying actually, so I've just wasted a tiny bit of fuel, it doesn't really matter too much about the fuel, it's only one unit of, of credit, it's one credit per, so it's half of biodata per fuel piece. And finally, this last guy down here, that I am not going to lose any crew for. I'd be so annoyed. Just one guy left, can I destroy him? No, because he starts heading off in that direction, brilliant, I can't even reach. That's so annoying. So hopefully, whoa, he's glitched out at the top. And can I get him? Can I get him? No, 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 no! Come on! Yes. Okay, reached him. There we are. Okay, lost one crew. We've got only eleven crew left. We lost four crew in that one planet. Oh god. Uh, we are going to really need to uh, start looking for the pakunk at some point to be able to regenerate crew. And for those who don't really understand how that works, basically the way it will work is that. I'll put one crew member in each of the Pekunk ships, because we get four when we first visit their home system. Um, and then we'll go against like the Vux or something, who are really, really slow, so we can like uh, es escape their, the battle. So we will basically just um, go with one crew, die, regenerate, hopefully regenerate. If we don't regenerate, you can just reload. But we regenerate with eight crew, escape with eight crew, and then we gain basically seven crew. So we're going to have a lot of pekunks around our uh, our ships, which is uh, going to be an interesting interesting thing.